Okay, this is the second semester <coughs> of the Kenosis class. <coughs> and let me begin by saying that everyone did really well on your uh, Kenosis test. If you want to know your specific grade, you can ask the, the registrar. But uh, three of you made in the 90s, one of you made in the 80s, and that's all good. <clears throat> so I'm real proud of everybody. I, I uh, you know, I don't normally give tests, so I'm just glad to see that uh, you were either listening to the class or to the one where I gave the answers. But sh you were listening somewhere, and that's important. So bless you for that. <clears throat> All right, this is class number 13 in our series, even though it's the next semester. And if you would, turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to look again at the scriptures that are the foundation for the first semester of this. Beginning with verse 5. Let this mind, and in truth, the word mind there is the word attitude. And if you look it up in the Greek, you'll see that it is so. Let this attitude be in you which was also in, in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." When I, uh, I first, many years ago, when I was in Bible school and was told about the kenosis of Christ, I, uh, in my early days, I had a roommate that had a lot of good study books, and so I looked it up, and I've done it many times since then, and in every explanation, uh, most of the people say, if you would ask the question, you know, the kenosis means he emptied himself, right? You remember that. What did he empty himself of? And so many of them say this, that Jesus emptied himself of his visible glory. All right. Now, I want to tell you that just because you hear something doesn't mean you understand it. <laughs> because I, for years, did not understand that. And in fact, it sort of bugged me that, I, that that would be the simple answer. He emptied himself of his visible glory. It wasn't until some time ago that the Lord began to himself explain that to me. And I thought, isn't it interesting that the truth can be coming right at us and we're a little bugged by it? Because I was. But it was the truth. But I didn't understand the truth. But when you think you understand everything and something comes at you you don't understand, it couldn't be right. Right? Because you already understand everything. And um, my mindset in the earlier days was to learn the Bible. It was to be knowledgeable of the things of God. It was all under the umbrella of being conformed to the image of Christ or whatever. <clears throat> but in reality... My pursuit wasn't so much the image of Christ as to how I carried myself as much as it was 
the knowledge of Christ and in having that I would get everything that I need. And so uh, you become the blind leading the blind because you're blind if you don't see. This thing of Jesus emptying himself of his visible glory, yes, it's theological, but to Jesus it wasn't theological. It was literally the way he carried himself as a man when he walked on this earth. Now, we'll see in some of our coming classes more clearly, but everything that we talk about in relationship to kenosis applies to us. That we are also in a kenosis or a self-emptying, and if we don't understand this or we just understand that Jesus did something, If nothing else, we will, we will not understand Paul, or we will not understand Stephen, or we will not understand, you know, different people in the, in the Bible, because we, and, and in truth, we really won't understand Jesus, because it is letting this mind and this attitude that is Jesus be in us. There's the image of Christ. It is Christ. It's not like Christ. It is Christ. <clears throat> and so I'm going to ask all of you to be very serious in, in trying to comprehend some of the things I'm going to be sharing this time around because I believe that they explain an incredible amount of things in the life of Jesus that most people can't explain because they have a wrong view or a lesser view, you know. And so this reality that he emptied himself, that he emptied himself. And as I began to get into it, two terms began to come to my mind. The first one was official glory. Official glory. And the other one was Glory of nature. To help you get this, let me just say right off that Jesus emptied himself of his official glory. Now, many of you have probably already run into trouble if you don't understand this truth because it's affected you. It's hit you between the eyes. It's offended you in certain ways. Um, let me read a little statement here. To understand this, we must define the difference between official glory and the glory of nature. The difference between those two. Um, <clears throat> that translation that we have here. He made himself of no reputation. He would empty himself by making himself of no reputation. This thing of making yourself of no reputation is self-emptying. It defines self-emptying. Uh, that's why the Greek translators chose to use those specific words because apparently they actually sort of got it because the actual words are more self-emptying. But they chose to translate it, he made himself of no reputation. Now let me, let me explain this. 
He made himself of no reputation in relationship to his official glory. And we're going to go over, we're going to get, we're going to go through the Gospels and see incredible amounts of scriptures where this is clearly the case when if there had been any other choice, any other direction, it wouldn't have gone that way. But this is what he was doing. This is what he was about. Because there was a glory that he wanted to bring to the Father as a man. Or can I say, as man. To bring back the original thing that God had in his heart when he created man. And to give that to him, not based on the Son of God. but based on the Son of Man. And we'll, we'll take a class for all of that and get into that <clears throat> a little more clearly also and as seen from this angle right here. Um, I wrote, the act of emptying himself involves stripping himself of any glory that would come through means of official glory as the Son of God or as the son of David, or as the Messiah, or as, and we'll, you know, we'll examine this a little more clearly. We'll see that, there, that he wasn't offended by that, that he wasn't afraid of that, but he had a higher calling that he stuck to all the way through, no matter what the situation and that in most of the situations, he not only stuck to it, he made it clear, this is the way I'm coming at everything, not this. That's why I'm not, he would basically say, that's why I'm not moved by that, because that has no bearing on my calling as a man. Or, can we put it like this? as a man or mankind who would bring the kind of glory to God that he wants. Well, there, right there, that'll, that'll throw you, if, unless you understand exactly what it is that he's talking about. <clears throat> so, let me read here again. There is an outward glory. You can say a royal, royal glory, a glory when when one is exalted. You agree? Uh, just, let's, just con let's consider that for a moment. There is a, a glory when one is exalted. Usually that's over official means. Okay? That's over official means. I want, this early on, I want us to begin to start to consider what kind of glory have we sought even when it wasn't uh, even if it wasn't selfish and it probably was but even if it wasn't it wasn't the glory that he was after it wasn't the thing that would uh, you know what lousy words please his heart for the thing that he started creation for in the first place. Why he made creation, why he made man, and all that was lost from the very beginning, from the very beginning, okay? So, this official glory is open, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a being approved openly. Any, anybody ever Anybody ever saw it? How, how shall I put this? Anybody ever sought to climb up the ladder of success at Axe Bible School? Though it be a little tiny ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Though it be a ladder to almost nowhere. There is actually the possibility that wherever you are, whether it be here or in a big organization, 
that something says I need to move up, I need to be seen, I need to find, we say find my place, but in many cases we may be taking a place that is not, shall I say, not yet ours, but even if it was ours, to Jesus and to those that would be his body, official glory would not, and I mean it, would not be what he was after. Now that's, that's sort of an amazing thing when you consider, and this is where we get tripped up, we're so in consideration of the Son of God that we think that the real deal is, is that Jesus came here pretty much to prove that he was the Son of God, and while that was an aspect, he didn't even want that proved by official glory or by the trappings that bring about official glory. He wanted that proved by revelation. By revelation. There are a lot of scriptures running through my mind right now, but we're still a little early, and I don't want to jump too far ahead. I want us to, I want this class to sure. Uh, for sure to nail down the concepts of, of what we're trying to deal with here. <clears throat> uh, official glory, to see the Son of God in his beauty and in his full honor. Okay. Now, let's drop it down to the earth a little more and, and us. While we may not be the glorious Son of God, have you ever been disappointed or upset that somebody didn't see you in your beauty and your full glory? They didn't recognize you for the glorious person that you are, for the things that you have done, for the, you know, and, and to just bring it in a little sharper focus, but they did recognize it in someone else. Because if you just leave that out, you just go, yeah, they didn't. But I think it brings it home when you start saying it does hurt if somebody else is, being, is, is receiving official glory. I'm going to say it again. Official glory is not where it's at. And if they're getting it, <laughs> they still have not arrived at what God wants to be brought about. And it's, there's no problem with them getting it. Jesus did get official glory at different times in his walk. And he dealt with it a certain way, and we'll, we'll see that. We'll see how he dealt with official glory when it came. But he never sought official glory. He never sought it. Okay? Okay. Another factor which we have spoken of in the past is we say, well, Jesus came as the Son of God to prove that he was God, that he was the Son of God. And his works and miracles prove that. But the, no, Jesus himself said, my works and miracles prove that God is in me. But not that I'm God. If you're the Messiah, tell us plainly. Why don't you tell us? Why don't you just say it? Do you remember sort of those words? You know, come on. Stop hiding your visible glory. We'll, we just want to hear it. Jesus never said, I'm the Son of God. They nailed him for being the Son of God, but not because he said it. He said, God is my Father, and there's a difference in that. One is declaring yourself, and the other one's declaring someone else, and by, you know, by going through that route, you would assume that you're declaring yourself, but you may not be, and Jesus certainly wasn't. He was declaring his Father all completely, and, but he wasn't just declaring his Father, folks. He was declaring the one who was at work in him. Do you see the difference? I mean, you know, you can call him father or babu. It's still this one that's in me that's doing it. I don't care if you call him Shirley or goodness and mercy. Oh, never mind. 
Don't call me Shirley. <clears throat> Never mind. So this, this whole thing relates to um, being openly approved. This official glory relates to being openly approved, being uh, acknowledged. Um, there being a display toward me whereby I receive official glory. Okay? And, um, well, let me make sure I got this right here. Yeah, it is a glory that is seen, known, and honored by others. It takes into consideration the status, the position, the accomplishments, and the worthiness of the person. Okay. Jesus would constantly do things and tell people not to talk about him. Why? Because he is not seeking official glory. And we'll, we'll get into that. We'll have a whole section on power and miracles. We'll get into all of that, and we will see that to Jesus, those were not acts of miracles and power like, like it is to most Christians. That it was totally on another basis that he did those things totally on another basis. And that when they would take it off of that basis, he'd, he would say, we're not going to talk about it anymore. Don't talk about it. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> he would do that regularly because it was clear, crystal clear to him what God wanted, where God was going with all of this, where he was to go and what his part was, and he made himself of no reputation in the sense of he emptied himself of all official glory. Just think about Christianity at large. Most people are working toward official glory. They believe, and this is a fact, they, most Christians and most ministers believe that the more good and honorable their reputation, the more it brings glory to Jesus. Now, let's just think about that for a minute. The better my reputation, the more it brings glory to Jesus. then why the heck would Jesus empty himself of official glory that would bring glory to the Father if that, were, if that principle worked? But he assumed that the only thing that gave, brought glory to the Father as a human being was when we allowed his life to be the producer and not our reputation that we have built to bring him glory. The greater I am, the greater glory Jesus gets. What? I mean, come on. Let's think through some of these thoughts. Does that even make sense? The greater I am, the greater glory he gets. John the Baptist was the first minister on the scene when Jesus showed up, and here was his principle. I must decrease. He must increase. That's what was in his heart. Okay. Enough said on that. We'll get into a lot of different aspects of those things as we go. Um, let me read a little more here. In kenosis, the things that have normally elicit, elicited personal glory unto him based on title or position was hid. And I mean... Let me ask you this. Was Jesus the Messiah? Yes, he was. Did Jesus go around trying to convince people he was the Messiah? Did he do anything by going, well, you know, the reason why that guy got healed is I'm the Messiah. I mean, think about that. Did, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. In my early goings with the Lord, I always thought, Gee whiz, Jesus, you're really dumb. You could have capitalized on a bunch of this stuff. You, are you following me? That you could have, you could have, every time you did something, you said, ta-da. You're looking at him, baby. 
son of God, son of David, Messiah, in the flesh. <laughs> but he didn't do that. And when they said, you, you know, you did this, he'd say, no, my father did it. When they tried to put him down for doing it on the Sabbath, he said, I didn't do it. It was my father. I didn't do anything on the Sabbath. And when they tried to raise him up for doing it, he said, I didn't do it. It was my father. He was not concerned with personal glory about him. He was concerned about being the kind of man, the kind of person, the kind of mankind that God the Father wanted when he made everything from the start and he knew what he wanted and he was set on giving him that. And he wasn't going to get all, you know, the first thing the devil hits him with is official glory. You know, if you'll do this, I'll give you all these kingdoms. Well, you know, first of all, Jesus could have said, well, they already all belong to me. Or he could have said, I sit above all of this and a greater kingdom than that. But I don't believe any of that was his motivation. That would have been ours. We would have said, stupid devil. You know, you got nothing and you got nothing to give. I got greater than all this. I'm the son of God. Right? If any of you were in that place, do you think maybe you think you'd ever use the phrase nanny nanny boo boo to the devil when he pulled it? You know, you you are an idiot. Jesus' words were quoted scriptures and he said he kept saying stuff like, There shall be no other gods before my God. But he kept honoring the Father. He didn't, he wasn't seeking something great. In other words, you know, Jesus could have had our kind of mindset and he could have said, well, if I start off with all these kingdoms, God will really be happy because I will serve him. And I'll use all of this for his glory and immediately upon my ministry. Bingo! He's going to have all of this great stuff. But instead, he walks off and, you know, back into the wilderness and finishes off his 40 days and 40 nights, hungry and tired and tempted. And, but the man that God always dreamed of, if you will. <laughs> Not one with great power, just one with the power to walk by another life. Not one with great, you know, oh, I've done this, you know. When we can't, folks, when we can't do the simplest task to the great glory of God by the life and nature of Christ, then we got a problem. When we can't be seen among the worst people or seen with people that would affect our reputation. You know, then we're already off. You know, we're already off. Because if it's God's love, you just love. You, you don't have to have certain requirements met to love. You just love. Or do we love because something's beautiful? Or we, do we love because... Or are we attached to something because by my attachment here or my positioning myself there, I can reach a place where I will get official glory? And wouldn't it, you know, won't it be nice when people look up to me? Let me tell you, until you get the Father looking at you and with smile on his joy in his heart because he's you know what what was the words 
This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's the life. That's the one. That's the one that I love. Well, folks, that applies to us because that's the life that we have. And that life stoops down and washes feet. Or goes the extra mile. Or takes slaps and takes them. But does it because... I don't mind turning the other cheek, but if I'm going to be slapped by someone lesser than me, then everyone around me will think that they are higher than me. And I will drop in official glory. Well, you'll drop in the eyes of the Father if you, if you don't. And you'll never be the man, and of course when I say man, man or woman, mankind. You'll never be the man that God wanted. We, I've said it often here, but many churches, they have these short-term mission trips, and everybody pays big bucks to go, and they go down, and they, they spend two weeks somewhere on a mission field, and they all seem so spiritual and everything. But when they come back, they are pretty much go back to the life they had before. And instead of going down, and uh, I mean, I'm going to give you probably the worst example that I could, but it's one of the few I have because we, we lived through it. When Deb and I went to the mission field as missionaries, we went with an organization that said, you will be a dying seed. Do you understand what that means? That means you fall into the ground and die there. We don't expect to ever see you again. That's what they, that was it. And that was it. And they said, you die and you bring forth fruit there. And what, what is your task? To die. What is your task? To lose your life. Okay, then you go and don't think about coming back here. <laughs> From now on, your service is to those people. Well, you say, well, what are you doing back here? <laughs> well, the country we were in went communist, and they wouldn't renew our visa and told us to get out because we were preaching Christ. But while we were there, we had gathered a bunch of, you know, a bunch of clothes that were given for those people, you know, that were given, that we could give out to the, the poor people. And where we were at was not in the big city. We were out in the bush. There was nothing but poor people. Well, we got there, and I got there, and, and uh, I, I became the pastor of several churches there, and I used to walk a circuit, and I would walk among the people and everything, and Boy, it didn't take me but one day to realize I had left all my good clothes back and I was I had brought, you know, clothes that I knew would probably be appropriate. They weren't appropriate at all. They they were like high class compared to these people. I had to start digging in the throwaways that I'd brought for them. And that's what I began to wear. <laughs> Why? Because you go walking among those people looking like that, and they don't want to hear what you got to say. And so I would just walk, knock on a door. Um, hello? You know, doors are open. Everything's open there. Yeah, no doors. So they say, hello, what, you know, what is it? Well, I'm uh, the new pastor down here at the little church here in Cary Park. And I just wanted to get to know you. Oh, I'm busy. We're washing dishes. I know how to wash dishes. You do? Or dry? Well, come on in. Sit there, start washing or drying their dishes. Just talking to them as the Lord leads. Just getting to know them. Just spending time with them. Because the moment you show any sort of official glory, they go back down. Do you understand what I mean? Like a turtle in a shell. They just go, uh, they don't, you know. Because why? Because every American and every Englishman and everybody that's ever came over that was white 
that's what they did. And in fact, I was told, and, uh, you know, and I believe it was the Lord at work, but I was told, you're the only white man that ever walked down here in Cary Park with us, that's ever walked around in our neighborhoods. You're the only white man in all the years that we've ever seen here. And, you know, I said, well, I, I, I love it here. Yes, I, ate, I sat down at meals and ate stuff that I would not have wanted to eat. But God was with me because it was Christ. And, and I'm not talking about me and Deb. I'm, not ta I'm talking about a reality that we think by building our reputation, we're going to become something special for God. And I tell you that the lower you get, the more God can release the sun. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. We, we want a release of the sun. Can I get amen? We want people to see Jesus. We want something to come out that is undefinable. It's not the words. It's not the phrases. It's not the, the mannerisms. There is something undefinable that is the Lord and it is coming from the Lord and it affects people in the Lord. And we see that and we sort of, you know, you can either say we get jealous or we get moved to want that. I don't, you know, that, does, that may not necessarily be jealousy, but it may. You know, it may. But we want that indefinable thing. But do we know what Paul or any of these people went through to get that? Do we know the spirit that is at work in them that's actually releasing that, if you will? <clears throat> and a lot of times, and we'll get into this, a lot of times people will give those people some official glory, though that's not the goal, Amen? Come on. Stick with this. That's not the goal, but they may get official glory, and we might even covet the official glory. But we just went the opposite direction with the Lord when we do that. We just totally went the opposite direction because he, he is not trying, you know, we go, God is trying to, to lift me up, to glorify me, to exalt me, but you people keep putting me down. Now, now I remember thinking that in my younger years. <laughs> I remember it's like I was, there was a, 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 what do they call that, a glass ceiling, you know, and I can't get above this glass ceiling, and, and, it, and you know, I really sensed that God loved me and he was with me and all that stuff, but I couldn't seem to break through that. And it seemed to be everybody else's fault. Well, the reason why this ain't happening is because you people won't give me the honor and the glory that I should receive. Shame on me. <laughs> but I thought that. I'll admit it right now. You know? And... You know, with some of the stuff I've been through, I've had little flashes, and then I go, what am I thinking? That's dumb. This is not my path, because I want to let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus. Yes? Sure. Naked. God made him walk among the people. I mean, they're children, little girls, stuff like that. Uh, there goes the man of God. How many people, how many do you think, do you understand what I'm saying? How many people probably said that? There goes the man of God. No, I don't think anybody was saying that, but they're going, there's, there's Brother Wacko. <laughs> and so, well, why did he do it? God told him to. 
That's all that matters. Well, but what, does, what do the neighbors think? What does the religious community think? What do the families think? And so you come to the conclusion, dude, if you were thinking about, you know, getting anywhere in ministry, you just shot it all down. However, God came back from that and just blew them out of the water with realities from above that were just incredible. He's the one, you know, whose name is in front of 53. Isaiah 53. What an incredible chapter of the Lamb and a recognition of the Lamb. That's his name. That's who he is because we say, and here's the deal. You know, I mean, here's the deal. We say, well, once you get into that sort of mess, Isaiah, you'll never get out of it. You'll never live that down. I got news for you. God can do anything he wants. He can supersede and override. He can do stuff left and right. But I also remember at times when stuff was going like that, and, and you know, I was just doing my best to follow Jesus, but everything was, seemed to be looking the other direction and everything. And this thought came to my mind, and we'll get into this again, as I said. This thought came to my mind. Well, God can do anything he wants. He could start doing miracles and power and all sorts of stuff through me, and everybody would beat the door down to get to me. He's not trying. That's not an option for sons. That's not an option because he's not seeking that kind of glory. And he's not seeking for you to be bolstered up in that kind of glory. But I thought those thoughts. <laughs> I thought those thoughts. And I, I thought those thoughts until he showed me clearly. He showed me. Not he showed me to show you. He must show you. But when he showed me what was really in his heart, I went, well, you know, I'm just dumb. I am so dumb to ever even think. It's like, for a while there, that's what got me through, was knowing that God could turn this thing like that. And just, you know, I could stand out on the corner and preach and people just fall down. And they'd gather and, you know, I could lay hands on me and they'd just be healed left and right. And God can turn this thing. And it was almost like the, the, the Holy Spirit sort of nudged me sort of hard. Uh, dude, that's not going to happen. He don't think that way. He doesn't even think that way. He doesn't? No, he doesn't. And he's not going to work circumstances so that you'll think that way. Well, that's over with. I guess I better find uh, something else to hold on to. Yeah, him. <laughs> All right. So, um, let me read this again. In kenosis, the things that would have normally elicited personal glory unto him based on title or position was hid. The official glory of his office was hid. Any glory that came by reason of position or ability, it was the Father, not me. Ability or relationship to God in a personal way as son was forfeited. Was forfeited. But there is a glory that is unseen. Everything we've talked about with official glory is that it be seen. I mean, can you admit that? I mean, this is important. We're taking a little stop here. We're, we're, we're marking a milestone here. Everything about official glory is that you be seen, that you be honored in being seen. 
There is a glory in not being seen. Some of you may be where I was, and had I been sitting there in a certain place, I would have said, oh, sure, okay, yeah. It's a little tiny glory or something, but I, you know. I mean, I, I, mean, I know what I would have thought. I'm not even going to share it here tonight, but I can tell you God convinced me with the word of God and then through the word by the spirit showing me the things of his heart that there is a tremendous glory in not being seen. All right, there is a glory whereby people will use it. You'll, you'll have that glory, not the official glory, the glory of nature, where people will use it and abuse it and take advantage of it. They will take advantage of you because you have this glory. And by calling upon it, they are secretly honoring it. <laughs> the fact that they would even call upon you in those kind of situations is a form of honoring you, but not with official glory. They are not honoring you with official glory. They are honoring the fact that they believe that you have this uh, glory of nature, and they're banking on it when they get in the crisis. You're the one they call. They see it, but they don't see it with their eyes. They believe in it, but they don't believe in it in terms of giving you any official glory over it. But they do honor it in their own twisted way. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, so by calling upon it, they are secretly honoring it, but afterwards, no official glory is given. And this is, this is the case over and over with Jesus. They would, when they needed him on terms of his nature coming through for them in their crisis and in their need, they ran to Jesus. But when it came time to really honor him and stuff, most of the time they didn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They were fearful of the people who had official glory because they weren't doing it. You with me? All right. Afterwards, there was no official glory given. <clears throat> there was a glory to Jesus of a particular nature. All that he did in service or said were a witness of what he was because they were an expression of himself. Deb, could you turn that off? <clears throat> to truly learn him is to learn him in this way. Now, I believe that we're going to be human <laughs> throughout all eternity. I mean, I don't believe that we're going to be transformed into angels or we're going to be some sort of glowing creatures like on some of these space movies. I think that we'll be mankind. Okay? I believe, in fact, I'll tell you this, I believe Jesus will be a man for the rest of his eternity eternal existence forever and ever he will have a human body and he will be considered man he gave up certain things and took that on himself so well and my point is this if you are man you've got to be the kind of man that he wants and again when I say man I'm talking mankind not male mankind got to give him the kind of mankind that he wants. And what he wants is all tied up with Jesus and it's all tied up with this spirit and this nature. Uh, 
I wrote it down. I was somewhere, and a, a new translation for this verse came to me. Let's see if I can sort of hit on it. It probably won't be near as good. Um, who being who being the very form of God in being who who in form being God in form in his basic being in form and being he is God. He thought it not robbery to demand the trappings of Godhood, the responses of people to Godhood. It sort of, I mean, it does sort of bring a new light into those verses, don't you think? I mean, it, who literally in being can be nothing but God could give up Godhood uh, um, blessings, Godhood, uh, what am I looking for? The, the, I keep using the word trappings, the privileges. privileges, that's the word I was looking for. Who gave up the privileges that go with being, with, with being perceived as God. Wow, that's pretty cool. Because the bottom line, and I guess the thing we'll get into next session here is, <laughs> he couldn't help but be God. Do you understand? He, he is God. You can't cease to be God in the sense of your being. Lest there is no more God. God does not cease. God is eternal without beginning and without end. So when it comes to his being, he was being in the form or formed and in being, he was God. But he gave up all of the glory, honor, and privilege that came with being God. And he became in the form of a man, and that's a different word than the first word, became in the form of man, and not just in a physical body, but in the sense of not demanding anything that came with the privilege of being God or being perceived, even being perceived as God, you know, Remember Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus did get excited, but he said, Flesh and blood have not revealed that to you. In other words, I did nothing to convince you of that. Only by the revelation. Only God the Father revealed that. And upon this rock am I going to build my church. They're going to know me. Not through miracles and power and this and that. They're either going to really know me or they're not going to know me at all. Is that cool to anybody? <laughs> it's, it's cool to me. All right, we're going to stop and we'll come back next class.